Well, good morning, everyone. And it is literally morning. I was actually going to take this video and combine it with last week's uh, raw vegan video where I've gone raw for the summer. The reason I decided not to combine these videos is just basically because changes are happening. And I mean uh, huge changes. Number one is the ridiculous detox that I have actually gone through. I went through a detox when I became a vegan. And even so, I think uh, vegan food still kind of helps you detox your skin and um, everything else. But it's a little bit slower process than going raw. It's just the energy in the food, I guess. I don't know what it is, but it's very cleansing food. It's very astringent. It's like the version of eating clean when you're a vegan. Technically, I have not given up any food source. I'm still eating, of course, fruits and vegetables. I'm eating beans and legumes, but they happen to be sprouted. I'm not eating wheat or wheat products, but beans, legumes, nuts, everything else that I ever ate, I'm still eating just in a raw form. I think the only change is that uh, now I'm eating living foods. My skin is getting definitely clearer, so that was a good call because that was one of the main reasons I decided to go raw. Uh, things just weren't right with it. I mean, terribly itchy skin and very dry skin. Call it the hydration. I seriously think that toxins are coming out. Let me tell you a little bit about that. The detox has not been fun, actually. It's like um, detox heavy. Um, when you go vegan, yes, you detox. You detox from dairy. Uh, you get all the stuff out of your system. You get all the cholesterols the meat cholesterols and everything else out of your system. But on a raw diet, it's just like um, cleaning heavy. The strangest case of that came the other day. My left arm began to itch incredibly. I started scratching it and then, you know, I just kind of looked at it and it was all red and it had these bumps on it, just like poison ivy. And I said, poison ivy, this is crazy. I haven't gone anywhere near poison ivy in at least a week. I can't have a delayed reaction. And then as I started noticing the way that the bumps were, they were just like water filled bumps, just like poison ivy. I noticed it was in the same pattern as the worst case of poison ivy that I had ever gotten. And at that time, I was just, just about uh, 13 years old, which was really strange. It's like, man, I'll tell you, that's really weird. So being that I was out and getting ready to go places, um, I said to myself, well, that's okay. When I get home, I'll just go ahead and put some baking soda on it. I just kind of leave it alone, try not to scratch it. I get home and... Um, look at it and pretty much within the five hours that I was out it was totally gone except for just a series of little red bumps you can still see a couple of the little red bumps on it it was just so strange that was the strangest thing ever and so poison ivy can last in your system for years and years and years and years and years that's just insane. I'm also along my shoulders and along the top of my back. I have some zits that have been pretty angry and they haven't gone away again for years and years and years and years and years. They're starting to get lighter and they're starting to actually disappear, which is amazing. So anyway, across my skin, I've had all these eruptions. I mentioned that um, old pains will come back, just really strange old pains that I'd had. And, you know, they'll linger for a little while and then they'll kind of go away. So that's what's happening on the outside. And on the inside, um, I've, I had a case where in my side, all of a sudden, it just seemed like something broke loose. It was really an odd sensation. I don't know what that was about or anything else, but... Um, it gave me a little pain for a while. It then just uh, kind of went away and I felt better. Sunday night, I believe it was, I'd been raw for about six days. 
I got brain fog and it was just so acute. Brain fog and also tiredness and this real, real weakness that went all the way up and down my spine. Just because of the nature of it, it was so bad that I said, well, you know what I'm going to do is I've got to like arrest this detox. I've got to stop it. I went home that night and I cooked a bowl of rice, ate it with an Indian masala sauce. In the long run, I ended up having maybe about two bowls of rice. It was fine. It did take a while for the detox to calm down, but it eventually did. And I got up the next morning. I thought, uh, you know, maybe I should have a bowl of rice every day and just kind of call it off. But I got up the next morning and felt pretty good and just uh, continued on the raw food thing. said to myself, if I have to go into like eating a bowl of rice or eating something else, it's nothing. I'm not out to prove anything to anybody. And I was seriously thinking of maybe having a bowl of rice a day. But it got to the point where I said, nah, I don't really need to. So I won't do it. Um... I'll just kind of continue on. So anyway, that was as bad as it got, and it's never gotten that bad again. Although once in a while, I'll still feel weakness along my spine. Haven't had the brain fog since. I can tell that changes are happening just because of the reactions of different people. I'm not taking too much notice, really on these things, except for just what I go through and experience in a daily life. Now, given I do have to say that I've probably dropped about 12 pounds all in all, which is uh, really something. Because like I said, my caloric intake, intake probably has gone up, or I think it's gone up. The amount of food I eat has uh, really <laughs> gone up. So um, I go to work on the 10th day. And all these people where I work, I maybe had about four or five people remark about my look. You know how it is when um, people know there's some kind of change, but they don't quite get it. The first one was uh, so strange because I had cut my hair around the time that I went raw, but it was maybe about a week before. And it was an extreme haircut. It was just wearing bangs and a trim. I went to work and um, I got comments such as, um, you look really good. Did you cut your hair again? Somebody wanted to know if uh, like something, some clothing item that I was wearing it was new and just random stuff like that that really they don't know what I'm doing. Now, given I've thought about this and um, at some point, people are probably going to ask me what I'm doing, and I'm going to do everything in my power not to tell them. But this is a group of people that still are not over the fact that I'm a vegan. How am I even going to go and explain to them that I've turned into a, a raw foods vegan, even if it's only for the summer? How do I explain that? So... um I'll just keep them guessing. I'll just keep them wondering. So anyway, things are starting to feel good. Um, the itchiness on my skin and the dryness on my skin is uh, its slowly going away, and um, I feel a whole lot better. One of my main objectives and one of the things I really wanted to do. The first time that I ever noticed that living foods actually had energy and this is a really crazy thing i was probably about uh, 13 years old not knowing much about food prep i just happened to slice off the end of a iceberg lettuce and just you know pretty much ate the round so anyway as i sliced it off and i saw that cross section i either saw or perceived or something. It was just like energy, like an energy that actually was coming out of that area that I sliced it. I mean, I don't know how I happened to see it, but I happened to see it and it really made an impression on me. Of course, in the end, I put it on a plate and probably 
put craft Italian dressing on it, heavily laden with uh, additives. I had seen that uh, many times after when I really notice it is when I cross section something or cut it in half. Living foods, I mean, I've always gone by that. And then my own perception of people that have gone on living food binges, let me say, not all of these people have been vegan. And uh, what I mean by that is I knew somebody with high cholesterol. We were a little bit worried about him because we knew he was kind of sick and all of a sudden he began dropping a great amount of weight. When it came out in the final analysis, he was eating quite a few raw foods, raw fruits and vegetables. And this was somebody I worked with. He would come in in the morning, he'd have a ton of fruit. You'd see him around lunchtime and he would just like munch out on all these peppers and cucumbers and cut vegetables. A great amount of his food was raw. Now given he would also incorporate meat, maybe about three or four times a week he would have maybe about that much meat. I don't know if he was incorporating bread, but still what the raw food did for him, you could see it in his face. I mean, he looked like a, a much healthier person. He was losing weight. He was dropping it like crazy. He looked really good. The skin on his face, he didn't look so sallow. And then also reliable source, friend of a friend story. I had a friend that told me about somebody that had cancer and pretty much cured herself by juicing and only eating raw fruits and vegetables. I have no reason to doubt this story. This was somebody that she knew. It wasn't just a urban legend sort of thing going on there. It's so many cases like that. And you probably have noticed in your life too, you know, if somebody has uh, like really upped their raw vegetable intake, started eating salads for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no matter what else they throw on them. It seems that upping of raw in your life definitely helps. Last thing that I did want to mention, and this is uh, something I hope you'll understand because I don't really know how to describe it, but it seems like I have more energy than my physical self can put up with. I feel these surges of energy going on and um, I try to keep up with them and I have this many, many things that I want to do in a day then I have to like lay down and rest for about 15 or 20 minutes and then get back up and just go crazy with energy and do these things. But then I have to lay down and rest for a little bit. And this has to do again with the weakness in the spine that I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just like, I'll feel my spine just like tiredness radiating from the back. And... I just uh, deal with it, whereas before, it seems like I didn't do much in a day, and I would just have to rest, get over it. My brain seems to be constantly going, all these things I have to do. I've probably been more productive in the past three or four days than I know what to do with, than I really know how to handle. I've been at least, I'd say on the average, about 50% raw probably for the whole year last year, and I believe in raw food. This is the first time that I have totally gone over the edge and totally gone into it, even though maybe there's been an occasion where I might eat raw for the whole day, maybe not intending to, but salads just sound good to me, or the food that I'm preparing just may happen to be raw, but this is the first time I've been committed to it for a while. I guess you can call it my clean eating phase. Wish me luck. I'm going into work. I don't know what's going to be said today, but uh, I'm going in to face the music and I'm not, I ain't telling anybody what I'm doing. And they're probably going to think that I'm way out there now. Anyway, raw for the summer is working. All I ask for is a little bit of energy and for my skin to be clear. And it is giving me so much more. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to see more. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.